this microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-215. agencies, World Bank representatives, heads of government institutions, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. My name is Jenna Bosonko and I will be your moderator for this event. But as it is customary in the Gambia, we'll go with the national anthem as well as um, individual prayers. We may rise for the national anthem of the Gambia. Gambia Police Band. So from there, I'll just um, invite um, the Imam present here to lead us in Muslim prayer, and after that, we will take on the Christian prayer. If that is not available, we'll just go ahead and do this um, prayer individually. Can we pray in our own individual ways, please? May God answer all of our prayers and wishing you all a successful International Social Protection Conference. Like I said, my name is Jaina Bosonko and I'll be your moderator for this International Social Protection Conference. I am really honored and privileged to stand here today to do this, being an individual who is in the media and have been reporting on issues affecting children, persons aging, persons with disability and most vulnerable individuals in our societies. It is important that we convene here today, seeing, seeing all the stakeholders from different institutions to be here to put our hats and heads together to change social protection narratives in the Gambia is a step in the right direction. So to start with, um, we will just introduce the permanent secretary of the Office of the Vice President to give us the opening remarks. A round of applause for her. Your Excellency, the Vice President, 
Your Excellency, the First Lady, Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, or his representative, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, the EU Ambassador and Head of Delegation, United Nations Resident Coordinator and Head of UN Agencies, the World Bank Country Representative, Colleague Permanent Secretaries and Senior Government Officials, Governors, Mayors, International Delegates, Civil Society and Private Representatives, representatives of the media and press officials here present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am indeed pleased to be given the honor to give the welcome remarks. My office is undeniably humbled by the privilege of providing the leadership and guidance in the implementation of all social protection related efforts in the country. In addition to my task to deliver the welcoming remarks, it is my pleasure to give a brief context of the social protection discourse in the country under the oversight of the Office of the Vice President. In February 2016, the government of the Gambia approved the National Social Protection Policy 2015-2025. The policy defines a comprehensive and cross-cutting social protection agenda and proposes a set of priority actions to guide the gradual establishment of an integrated and equitable social protection system in the Gambia. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this international conference will provide a platform for the state and non-state actors in the social protection discourse, including development partners, both nationally and internationally, civil society and beneficiary groups to dialogue and exchange knowledge and experiences around the theme and other existing social protection policy matters. The conference will also serve as a platform where government can report progress made and challenges faced in the implementation of the National Social Protection Policy 2015-2025. The theme for the conference is accelerating social protection financing to increase coverage and reach. The government of the Gambia seeks to establish by 2030 an, an inclusive, integrated, and comprehensive social protection system that will effectively provide, promote, preventive, preventive, protective, and transformative measures to safeguard the lives of all poor and vulnerable groups and contribute to broader human development, greater economic productivity, and inclusive growth. As such, we need a regular convergence to take stock and also chart a way forward. At sector level in country, this is done through the National Social Protection Steering Committee and other esteemed coordination structures established to serve as clearing houses and platforms for sharing experiences, best practices, lessons learned in sectoral engagements to effectively alleviate poverty and vulnerability in our communities. Therefore, government recognizes social protection as a key priority of the recently formulated Recovery Focus National Development Plan 2023-2027. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to facilitate the coordination of our social protection related programs, the National Social Protection Secretariat was established in 2019. The establishment of the Secretariat was anchored on improving leadership and coordination 
in the social protection sector in the country. Let us leverage this convergence to look inwardly as government, individuals, society, and partners to take stock of what we have delivered so far. The mechanism of delivery, impact of our intervention, but most importantly, what more we can do to alleviate human suffering, especially among vulnerable populations. Today is an opportunity for government, development partners, civil society, and beneficiaries to interface and discuss with frankness and genuine passion towards the social protection agenda and delivery system. Delegates of this international conference will discuss objectively issues of fundamental importance, the pathway and vision of social protection in the Gambia and around the world. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Finally, I wish to once again welcome you all to this three-day International Social Protection Conference for international delegates and resource persons from Kenya, Ghana, Belgium, and others joining us online from Italy, United Kingdom, and United States. You are all welcome to the Gambia. I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Piers, from the Office of the um, Vice President for that um, brilliant speech. Um, personally, the first time that I learned of the existence of the National Social Protection Secretariat, the first thing that I asked myself was, under which umbrella does this particular agency exist? So then I learned about the fact that it's under the Office of the Vice President. Then I said to myself, then there's political will to ensure that the vulnerable individuals' plight are looked into. So sensing the fact that there's some sort of political will is a good thing. And I'm happy that um, the permanent secretary mentioned that we'll be having frank discussions. Looking in the room today and the caliber of individuals here, I am quite convinced that it's not going to be one of those convergence where we just meet and disperse later. It is going to be one of those convergence when, when we leave this hall, we will say to each other that action, 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 and action is what we need. That is why at the end of the conference, we'll be having some commitments that will be coming from me, you, and someone watching us online. So thank you so much. A round of applause for the permanent secretary once again. So up next, um, I will invite Sarafin Wakana, who is the United Nations Resident Coordinator. Thank you so much for joining us. A round of applause for her. <laughs> Thank you, MC, for giving me the floor. Uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, Your Excellency, the First Lady, Honorable Minister of Finance, and all other government representatives here present, <coughs> from central government to local government, my colleagues uh, from the United Nations agencies, NGOs, civil society representatives, private sector representatives, the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocol duly observed. I would say uh, good morning to all. I'm deeply honored to address this distinguished assembly at the Gambia International Social Protection Conference. It is a great pleasure to stand before you today surrounded by leaders, experts, and champions of social protection from the Gambia and across the globe. Uh, I'm here and extend the United Nations country team's heartfelt gratitude to the government of the Gambia for organizing and hosting this very important forum. I wish to extend our special thanks to the Vice President of the Republic and the First Lady, who are really gracing this occasion, and it's uh, a real commitment to social protection and the, over, uh, the overall well-being of 
Gambian citizens, and it's really commendable for all the good work they are doing. Today, we gather not only as partners in development, but as advocates for the fundamental principle of leaving no one behind. Social protection, as we all know, is a vital instrument in our shared mission to ensure that every individual, regardless of their circumstances, have the opportunity to live a life of dignity and unending opportunities. As we gather here today, we are reminded of the enduring challenges that persist in our world, including poverty, vulnerabilities, and inequalities. These challenges know no, no, no borders and affect individuals in every corner of the globe. It is only through our collective commitment to social protection that we can address these issues effectively. The COVID-19 pandemic and the triple crisis of food, energy, and finance has been a major setback on progress toward the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. And for the first time since the adoption of the SDGs, there was a, a reversal of the trend of progress due to the impact of these global shocks. And the UN and broader stakeholders recognize the pivotal role social protection can play as an accelerator of the achievement of many and even most of the SDG targets, from ending poverty and hunger to improving gender equality and access to health, education, and even tackling inequality and climate change. The Gambia, like many nations, faces its unique set of challenges in the pursuit of reducing poverty and vulnerabilities. The government's unwavering commitment to social protection as demonstrated by the establishment of the National Social Protection Secretariat and the operationalization of a social protection policy is indeed praiseworthy. These efforts underscore the Gambia's commitment to building a more inclusive and equitable society where every citizen can access quality education, health care, and essential social services. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, otherwise known as the CF, represents the UN's collective support and commitment toward government and people of the Gambia. It is worthy to mention that the recently signed CF was the result of extensive consultations across the country and outlines areas of cooperation with the government of the Gambia. The framework is aligned with the government's newly formulated green and recovery-focused national development plan. I want to take this opportunity to reaffirm the United Nations commitment to continue working with the government of the Gambia to deliver the much needed social assistance to the poor and vulnerable people across the country. We stand and remain ready to collaborate with government, other development partners, civil society organizations, and all stakeholders to strengthen social protection systems and expand their reach. The United Nations will undertake initiatives that can contribute to enhancing knowledge on social protection with the UN and how social protection contributes to the SDGs. And this is hoped to garner more support for social protection for all, consequently increasing the volume of financing that will be directed to the sector of increased coverage and reach. And together we can find sustainable solutions to consolidate gains in institutional strengthening, coordination, and information management systems, as well as building responsive social protection frameworks 
for better service delivery with the aim to improving the lives and the livelihoods of the people we serve. At the heart of our efforts is the recognition that social protection is not just a policy measure, it's a fundamental human right. And the Gambia, through its ratification of various international human rights instruments, including the UDHR, UNCRC, and the ACRWC, has made a commitment to uphold this right. And the SDGs provide an opportunity for all nations across borders to come together in solidarity and ensure that social protection becomes a reality for all. The outcome of this international conference, the responsive call to action paper, and the costed implementation plan will serve as a roadmap for advancing social protection, and not only in the Gambia, but across nations. It will guide the integration of social protection into national development plans and set a stage for innovative approaches to financing and expanding coverage. And the United Nations remains ready to provide technical assistance, expertise, and resources to ensure the successful implementation of these plans globally. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to express my profound gratitude to all participants and stakeholders, both from the Gambia and from countries near and far. Your collective efforts and shared experiences are invaluable, and together we can find the answers to the complex questions surrounding social protection. As we work toward a more just, inclusive, and prosperous future for people worldwide, we remain steadfast in our commitment to leaving no one behind. Let us work together and let's share our, to say with our shared vision of a world where social protection is a right, not a privilege. Thank you all and I wish you very successful deliberation. Thank you so much for that um, brilliant statement there. I think she's already set the foundation for us to start this three-day conference, reminding us that social protection is not a privilege, but a right. And we are also sending some grat gratitude to the United Nations for your continuous support. The resources that the National Social Protection Secretariat coordinates most of the time comes from bodies like the World Bank as well as the United Nations. So we appreciate your support and looking forward to more collaboration. A round of applause for the resident coordinator once again. So moving on, um, we'll be moving on to another development partner, which is the World Bank. So now to invite a representative of the World Bank. Yes. So um, it seems um, we will now move on to the EU representative. But just to say that, we also appreciate the work of the World Bank. It is because of the World Bank support to the National Social Protection Secretariat. That is why I'm standing here today. Um, two to three months ago, I went to Kenya to study on the building blocks of social protection as a journalist. So just to recognize the amazing work and support that the World Bank has given to the Secretariat, like I said, that is why today I have some basic understanding of social protection and standing here today, which is really helping when it comes to my reporting. So a round of applause to the World Bank, although they're not here yet, but I'm sure they want to be here with us and um, celebrate and commit together. So moving on, um, I will now invite the EU um, delegation, which is um, Corrado Pampeloni, ambassador of the EU in the Gambia, who is ably represented. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you will do a great job. A round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much. Clearly, I'm not Ambassador Pampaloni, yeah. <laughs> but um, his replacement is out of country and asked me to participate at this event. So, Your Excellency, Vice President of the Republic of Gambia, Your Excellency, First Lady, 
uh, Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, United Nations Resident Coordinator, Permanent Secretary of the Office of the <coughs> Vice President, National Coordinator of the Social Protection Secretariat, representatives of the civil society, distinguished guests, members of the press, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Let me uh, thank you for inviting the EU to uh, deliver a statement today at this conference. As I mentioned, the ambassador Pantaloni is out of country and he asked me to replace him. My name is Enrica Pellacani and I'm the head of cooperation at the EU delegation to the Gambia. First, I would like to uh, th start thanking the organizers for this important event, which is an opportunity to exchange and have dialogue on this very important subject. Coordination, dialogue, and partnership are the best way for aligning our work and for supporting the development of the country. Social protection is not only an ethical imperative, it is also a matter of social justice and is essential to achieve the sustainable development goals. We can mention the SDG 1, no poverty, but many others are also touched when we deal with social protection. And the EU, I believe, is a major supporter of the country's efforts in advancing in social protection. Between 2020 and 2023, we have provided technical assistance to the National Social Protection Secretariat in the office of the Vice President. And I believe this technical assistance has also been instrumental to advance uh, in the design and as well will also be helpful for the implementation of the programs in this area. Uh, but also we have been supporting the other programs and just to mention some, the uh, Building Resilience Through Social Transfer, BREAST, implemented by UNICEF. Uh, we provided more than four million for school meals program implemented by the Work Food Program. Uh, we also supported FION work group program uh, uh, in help uh, improving risk mitigation measures, including social safety nets. And I hope that also this be, there is a due visibility to the work that the European Union and its citizens have done for this country. I mentioned that the Gambia is one, uh, the European um, uh, Union is one of key partner as well uh, for the Gambia. And since 2017, we have provided more than 500 million euro to this country, which is, by the way, uh, considering the size of the country and the demographics, the largest contribution to an African country. Currently, we're working with the multi-annual indicative program that runs from 21 to 27. And among the three priorities, human development is one of them. So we have now, for the moment, allocated more than 110 million euro, and uh, this is uh, new funds will arrive after the midterm review. Human development was for the first phase of the phase of our program a key priority, but will remain so also for the future. And we believe that in the context of post-pandemic recovery and economic instability, we need to reinforce the social fabric, reduce inequalities. This is very important and cannot be overstated. Social protection for individuals and their families to ensure that they can meet their basic needs is crucial to reduce poverty, to promote economic and social stability. Social protection is one of the key areas that we will be looking at through the forthcoming budget support operation, 40 million euro that was approved last August and we hope to be able to sign the financing agreement very soon. And we will be supporting the expansion of the family strengthening program. That, uh, uh, and we will be targeting uh, the most vulnerable groups such as female headed households, households with people with disabilities or households with elderly people. Elderly people. We also will complement this budget support with complementary activities, uh, additional technical assistance, as well as uh, uh, an allocation for non-government organization to pilot activities concerning social protection. I would like to emphasize the importance of budget support. Budget support is a peculiar delivery channel because it transfer, transfers money directly to the treasury of the country. 
This means that we are fully aligned with the national priorities and policies, and also we are working with the government structures. So we can only embrace uh, the vision of the national social protection policy to establish an inclusive, integrated, and comprehensive social protection system that will effectively provide protective, preventative, promotive, and transformative measures to safeguard the lives of all poor and vulnerable groups in Gambia. One of the major obstacles for social protection is the lack of reliable funding. And, and indeed, very often the support is provided through project approaches supported by partner countries. By moving towards government financed and implemented social protection, we are moving to a more sustainable system. And indeed, this is also some uh, priority that is evoked in the national policy. Through the EU budget support, we will provide additional financial resources to finance the national priorities. So it is essential that the allocations done within government reflect the priorities as we see them in the national social protection policy. And it's essential as well that there are sufficient uh, resources that are mobilized, including domestic resources, to ensure that there are stable and sufficient revenues for social protection. I mentioned already that budget support also uses national systems and mechanisms. This is also in line with the national social protection policy, which calls for strengthening management and administrative systems to ensure that programs are more efficient effective and decentralized. Ladies and gentlemen, the expansion of the family strengthening program, uh, coupled with the secure earmark about uh, secure funding, is somehow very important for health. And um, we hope that this will allow indeed to ensure sufficient support. Now and for the next years, the EU will continue to engage closely with the Gambian and key stakeholders in government, with development partners, with civil society, in jointly moving forward the social protection reform process. We are proud of the partnership that we established in the past, and we trust this will be continued in the future. And I would like also to commend our excellent collaboration with government, in particular with the Office of the Vice President, the National Social Protection Secretariat, the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, the Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs. And I would like to conclude with a quote from Ban Ki-moon, former UN Secretary General. At times of global economic turmoil and uncertainty, investment in social protection is necessary, feasible and effective. This is what he said in 2011 and it remains very true now. And I hope with this thought in mind, that the proceedings will continue, will be fruitful, and we hope to be benefit for the design of our work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for that um, brilliant statement. I am, I am glad that you, you talked about the theme, which is um, sustainable financing. But just to say that already, um, the National Social Protection Secretariat is moving along those lines, considering the fact that it is currently building the social registry, which when it is ready, it will ensure that there will be less duplication of efforts when it comes to the meager resources that we have as a country. But before we move on to a particular video that we have to give context to the reason why we're here today in relation to the work of different ministries, I would also like to recognize the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, Fatima Tababaro. Through her Fatima Tababaro Foundation, we've also seen the amazing work that she's doing, already complementing the efforts of partners when it comes to social protection in the Gambia. Madam, we appreciate your efforts. A round of applause for her. So um, social protection is actually a cross-cutting issue, affects different sectors. So that is why we decided to put up a video to show you the different ministries' work, the different social protection initiatives that different ministries in the Gambia are actually partaking to ensure that efforts are channeled through one direction and there's no duplication at all. So please enjoy um, this video and we'll be right back after that. Mm -hmm. 
The Gambia is one of the poorest countries in the world, with rapid population growth, vulnerable health and agriculture sectors, low levels of education and gender inequalities. Social protection systems can change these narratives, as such systems are meant to boost human capital and empower citizens. This is done through investment in health and education, job creation, improvement in productive base capacities and protecting the aging population, women and children. This has driven the government of the Gambia's vision to develop a national social protection policy which defines a comprehensive and cross-cutting social protection agenda. The policy sets out in detail the government's vision and commitment to modernize the social protection system as well as steps it will take to broaden coverage to those in need of support. This policy gave birth to the government's decision to establish the National Social Protection Secretariat under the office of the Vice President to support the National Social Protection Steering Committee in providing leadership and coordination across the totality of social protection efforts in the Gambia. The National Social Protection Secretariat has provided direction and coordination in the fragmented social protection sector in the Gambia. It has revitalized the National Social Protection Committee into an active and authoritative body that is spearheading policy, decision-making on social protection issues. The government of the Gambia established the National Social Protection Secretariat to serve as the implementing body for the National Social Protection Steering Committee, as well as um, support and assist government um, on the coordination of the sector by providing the leadership across the totality of the social protection sector. The National Social Protection Policy um, has priority for the extremely poor um, individuals and households, um, vulnerable groups, um, children, the elderly, um, people living with disabilities, the chronically ill people and families affected by HIV, vulnerable youth and women, refugees and migrants, and prison inmates and their families. Several sectors have a role to play to ensure no one is left behind in social protection programs. Functioning educational institutions and programs must be available and sufficient and access must be given to everyone without discrimination. States have a role to provide free and compulsory primary education, adequate secondary education in different forms, and higher education on the basis of capacity, and to take concrete steps to ensure that these are free fundamental education for those who have not satisfied their basic learning needs, and to seek an overall development strategy for its school system, which includes access to education and decent general working conditions of teachers. What social protection initiatives is the Gambia Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education undertaken? As a social sector ministry, almost all our programs are geared towards social protection. And in this case, the schools, the um, classrooms we construct, the teaching and learning materials that uh, we provide to our schools, um, the school meals that uh, we provide to the needy children, uh, the school improvement grants, the safe um, uh, teaching and learning environment that we provide for the kids are all geared towards the holistic development of the child as a future leader. So basically, the mandate of the ministry is all about social protection. Evidence shows that social protection can narrow gender gaps in poverty rates, enhance women's access to personal income and provide a lifeline for poor women, especially single mothers. There is need to commit to close gender gaps by extending coverage and strengthening social protection flaws, including as part of the 2015 Addis Ababa Declaration on transforming Africa through decent work for sustainable development and the African Union's Agenda 2063. For uh, Ministry of Gender, Care and Social Welfare, we have been involved in social protection activities well before the establishment of the Secretary. We are trying to expand it. We call it now 
family strengthening program. In this program, we intend to you know assist uh, vulnerable children, orphans, also older persons, and also persons with disabilities. We want to help them through that program to you know at least improve their living standards. So all those are uh, social protection interventions that the ministry is undertaking. And we work closely with National Social Protection Secretariat uh, since they are the coordinating body. There is no one size fits all approach for extending fiscal space for social protection. Studies by international labor organizations show that social protection systems are huge redistributive mechanisms in most economies, often exceeding 30% of gross domestic product GDP. Transfers of this magnitude requires sound governance and management, in particular financial governance and economic management. Innovation is key to ensure sustainable financing of social protection programs. Of course, the government has worked on the financing strategy for social protection, uh, which has already been validated, but this will be subject to further review and also as part of further discussion during the conference with a view to ensure that there is a predictable way of financing. The key is to have a predictable way of financing. And like you referenced one of the countries, uh, it is the main tool uh, in terms of sustainable financing for social protection is to ensure that it is mainstream in the government. Of course, this is also in line with the Addis Declaration on Development Finance, which is a domestic social realization, it's a more sustainable way. So as a country, we are also looking at towards mainstream in government, uh, social protection in the government projects for a long-term predictable financing mechanism. Also, the development partners are always welcome and they always come to support for the initiatives. But this is the direction that government wants to take. To enhance households' ability to produce food, social protection programs should contribute to higher household incomes and increased consumption. Eradicating wall hunger sustainably by 2030 will require an estimated additional 267 billion US dollars per year on average for investments in rural and urban areas and in social protection so poor people have access to food and can provide their livelihoods. What are the available solutions for a tax-based economy like the Gambia? The, the situation in the Gambia is not that easy for us, but I think uh, the Gambia is a tax-based economy and uh, to sustain the, the financing, we cannot depend on uh, donor support. So what we uh, have to do is to look inwards and see how this we can broaden our tax base and we'll try to capture the leakages in the tax that is being collected. We know that what is being collected is far less than what is not being collected. And we try to, um, uh, there is a big uh, um, uh, informal sector in the Gambia, which is a lot of the informal sector is not being captured when it comes to taxation. And uh, we try to ensure that the, most of the informal sector is formalized. And uh, we try to digitalize as much as possible so that all the taxes that are collected are through digital means. And that will ensure that, you know, uh, the leakages that are happening and the physical contact working with uh, 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 money is reduced as much as possible so that all the taxes that the government is collecting will go to sponsor some of our social protection projects. And um, that's the only way I think, the most important way I think um, we can do this. Social protection requires continuous partnership and consultation to put the right mechanisms in place. The National Social Protection Secretariat holds the International Social Protection Conference on the team accelerating social protection financing to increase coverage and reach. Let me take this opportunity to wish um, the delegates um, a successful and fruitful um, international social protection conference. I would like to welcome all the delegates that, that are coming from uh, the region, throughout the region, and also within the country. And I would want to wish them a very successful social protection conference. And I want them to 
um, really, really look at the most pressing issues that are affecting our success of social projects on in the Gambia. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all the delegates, um, the ones from, from Basse, to Nordbaum, to Ulaha, and also welcome our international delegates. Uh, I wish them very well to have a successful international social process of conference. We also welcome our international resource persons as they also delve into other issues and hope to increase our understanding of how social protection can be financed in a sustainable way. So I welcome everyone and look forward to an exciting conference in the next three days. <laughs>
opportunity knocks once at a man's door. But do not break the door of my heart. Young people with limited associations to the formal job market. Tell me, if I, as a citizen of this country, if I, as a youth in this country, cannot afford my daily bread, Pako nakalay muna jeni jin and jacket. Nakalay muna jeni jin and jacket. Tak nyun nebnu buga tuki, bad way, banyun sisa Hong Kong. For so long, I have been without a job. Funeka mo uti. But yet still, yet still, cannot make ends meet. Ends meet? You think of ends meet? While I think of how to breathe, I am not only a disabled, but sick to the core. Illness and disability pain my biggest foe in my hot imprisoning bed I cry I cry and nobody hears my silent suffocated groans why why and I love it honey and a doctor Anna Garapi. You can hear Japale. Heavy rainfall. Heavy rainfall has courses flooded that has affected thousands of Gambians, including me. Houses severely affected. Certificates washed away. Food washed away. Happiness washed away. Everything washed away. Natural disaster. Natural disaster has attacked us with epidemics. You son and then. But Musa, I'm going to see. Can I come with you, son? Yabu. Mm-hmm. I just want Yabu. I told you, Fanan, can I come with you? Can I come with you? Can I come with you, son? Yala. Ali ke ya dala fai. Allah, Ali ke la dala fai. Kau buka kumbu musonya lah. Wo, wo, wo. Fomun tu mah. Tribalism, discrimination. Muntu malah nyimbe bandar nabangko kanjang. Pulau tiko dun tamol lay mol suwo kono be yopoti. Kumbu ni mindo be mol fala. Fal buka je bang. Mol mam balah fasu to nyue hari madi yal tinjata. Kelak watu watu kelak. Watu watu nyue fa. Na bangko kan cuma la badi dalam muli, nampam bala farm faye, malam for 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 saya bab bulin lam for bulin lam bama kalian nyalo, muna nawa kerja jam muna berdaru mau nyadi le, aman jele kusi, saya bab bulin nak kerja jam berdaru mau nyadi le, for sab bala farm nyoye, ngan nyoye mau koi, nawa nte, untuk lain yang bangko cuma la bab mulu mau koi la, who will help us? For nali afonye. From Talasic Islands to coloring trees to flying bees. And it's not even bad to add little cheese to it. If I give you a bucket of flowers of solutions to your problems, will you be able to contain your smile? That will be a moment of joy. Konbok, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to Mr. Job Ndama Job. He's the reason why they say agriculturally more Ndama cattle should be reared in order to minimize sleeping sickness. <laughs> the mountain of knowledge, the ocean of wisdom. Talk to them. 
I am here for you. Bi ngeen joy yeb ci sobe yalla ñu safaral ko. National Social Protection Secretariat organizes the International Social Protection Conference today to mobilize financing to accelerate increase coverage and reach with the golden theme accelerating social protection finances to increase coverage and reach. Manam dolel khalis yi ka ko do la fa pour ñu jappale ñi nga xamne dañ vulnerable. Tatu le lolu. The government of the Gambia has strengthened its social protection systems mm. to one, help individuals and communities to cope with the various risks like unemployment, mm -hmm. illness, disability, natural disaster, and economic downturns. Mm -hmm. Social protection here mm -hmm. does not only address immediate needs but also contributes to long term and sustainable development. <laughs> social protection fosters social cohesion by reducing social exclusion and improving social integration. My biology. By service, social protection programs to improve human capabilities mm -hmm. and empower individuals and communities to break the circle of poverty. One more time. Man, I'm sick of all the circle of poverty. We see Bob Pam, New Dorco, Danco, Nyep Muna Neka Benna. That's all in Luluai. And in line with the National Social Protection Policy 2015 to 2025, mm -hmm. Government of the Gambia has established the National Social Protection Secretariat under the Office of the Vice President to support the National Social Protection Steering Committee in providing leadership and coordination across the totality of social protection efforts in the Gambia. Since creation in 2019, mm -hmm. NSPS has helped to provide direction and much needed coordination in the fragmented social protection sector in this country. Mm -hmm. Today's programs can be rich, can reach their targeted beneficiaries with the Gambia Social Registry. This does not only reduce duplication and miss out, but increase coverage. Mm -hmm. Increasing finance, financing means more vulnerable individuals and households will be covered. Send joy. Konjali, the mob buganga waha kora gi di twenty one strings. New super le aferi. Lohoi. Kura kura misaya jonga ma kura kura misaya materenelo. Jarama NSPS. Everybody. Jarama NSPS. Jarama NSPS. Jarama NSPS. Jara, Jara, my NSPS, Jara, Jara, my to the Bright Start Entertainment. I think only with that performance, we, we are all now afraid of the work of the National Social Protection Secretariat. I don't think we need any more explanation after that performance of the work, that the amazing work that they do. Thank you so much to Bright Start Entertainment. And like I said, you know, youth and employment and just empowering young people is part of social protection. And it's something that needs to be looked into more and more and more, um, considering we understand the current dynamics when it comes to irregular migration. And I'm happy that it is something that they mentioned. So hoping that this is something that stakeholders we would take into consideration to bring about more youth empowerment programs to ensure that young people believe in their country and they get to stay here with us. So moving on, we will now invite the Honourable Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, who will be delivering a statement in relation to financing social protection. And that is 
why all of us are here today. We're all here today to commit to increasing finance for social protection to ensure coverage and reach. Thank you so much, Honourable Minister, for joining us. Thank you very much. I think my work is cut out for me after such a bright performance. It's put in context the moral dimension of social protection. Uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President, deputizing for His Excellency, the President of the Republic, High Excellency, the First Lady, Fatimata Barbaro, EU Ambassador here, ably represented by the Head of Cooperation, UN Resident Representative, Coordinator, and UN Agencies, Development Partners, IMF, World Bank, and other development partners here in present, senior government officials, members of the media fraternity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols duly and respectively observed. Good morning to you once again. It's my pleasure to participate in this important event of financing social protection. And the play that was just concluded put in context the moral dimension of social protection. And it is the center stage of government policies. Uh, it has really, really driven home the relevance of our policies as a government, that the agenda of His Excellency is to leave no one behind. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the theme of the conference that is increasing social protection financing to increase coverage and reach is reflective of the direction of the government's commitment towards social protection. This is underpinned by our conviction that social protection is the bedrock of development. Research in both academia and policy circles have proven beyond reasonable doubt the impact of social protection financing on breaking the intergenerational poverty and propelling, propelling of economic growth for shared prosperity and social justice. And as I have mentioned, the development agenda of His Excellency the President is inclusive and will always carry along the vulnerable members of society. It's a government that every citizen should see themselves in regardless of your social standing. Social protection in the Gambia is financed through multiple sources, from the government to the development partners to NGOs. The partners continue to support investing in our people through multiple channels, and the government continue to channel funds through the budget into various sectors, such as protecting multi-sectoral interventions. Allocating domestic resources is in line with the Addis Ababa Declaration on Development Financing, which states that the domestic resource mobilization is the most sustainable mechanism of financing social protection. Our commitment in social protection is articulated in the recovery focus NDP 2023 to 2027 Pillar 5, which is the empowerment, social inclusion, and leaving no one behind. It is anticipated to improve households' resilience and put in place safety measures to address vulnerabilities through social protection. In conformity with our international commitments and in collaboration with our partners, this will contribute towards achieving SDG 1 on no poverty, no one behind, po no poverty, target 1.3, which explicitly calls for the establishment of social protection system for all, prioritizing poor and vulnerable segments thereafter. Furthermore, the SDG goals contribute to social protection goal three, to ensure healthy lives and promote the well-being of all ages, and goal four, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote promotion of lifelong learning opportunities for all. Permit me to take you through a few interventions of the government in different sectors. On the health sector, we have just established a national health insurance scheme which will contribute towards out-of-pocket health expenditures and we expect it to stand at 24.4% as per the national health account. 
in more direct social protection sensitive budget lines, the government has expended approximately 161 million year to date. These include the vaccines and other essential medical supplies which benefit the poor and the vulnerable. On education and in line with the classification of the National Social Protection Policy, government expenditure on social protection in education amount to a whopping $420 million. These include school improvement grants, teaching aids, learning materials, open scholarships and bursaries, and school feeding program. And it goes a long way to improve both access and quality of education for poor and the vulnerable segment of uh, all. And the policy of the government of providing universal access to uh, education free from kindergarten to grade 12 is a testimony of the government support of social uh, protection in the area of education. In agriculture, we continue to offer value chain and entrepreneurship training to, for improvement of lives and livelihoods of economically active population. This is in support of social protection priority area three, which is promote livelihoods of and income of the poorest and vulnerable communities, especially the active population. These are implemented through various government and partner funded interventions. And in order to complement this and towards achieving full self-sufficiency, the government has provided to the farmers an input subsidy to the tune of $665 million. On the subsidies, the government continues to subsidize petroleum products in the country. And this amount year to date of 2023, $307 million to date. And for the year just concluded, government has subsidized petroleum products to the tune of $1.6 billion. Although due to the general nature, we could say that the Across the board, subsidy of petroleum might not easily classify as social protection, but since it covers uh, the vulnerable segment of society, it has ameliorated the adverse impact of the rising cost of fuel for the poor and the vulnerable. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in improving coordination structure of social protection, the government and the World Bank has supported the establishment of the National Social Protection Secretariat. The government continues to support its daily operation through government interventions. And this has contributed immensely towards priority, uh, policy priority five, which is strengthening leadership, governance, and social protection systems in order to design and deliver effective and efficient programs. On system, the National Social Protection Secretariat has de de developed the Gambia Social Registry which is at advanced stage of completion for nationwide coverage. It is a single largest database of all programs so that can be used towards making targeted intervention to the vulnerable communities. It will help in building a more efficient system of social protection systems. Currently, the social protection register has covered the rest of the country except the greater Banjul area and KMC. And once the register is completed, a nationwide subsidy in areas such as fuel, uh, fuel will be suppressed and targeted means-tested intervention will be invoked to make the intervention of government resources more reflective of the priorities. The national protection policy outlined the need for a predictable and sustainable financing mechanism for social protection, and hence the theme of the conference today. As we accelerate towards the vision of the policy, that is, to establish by 2035 an inclusive, integrated, and comprehensive social protection system. The government and its partners are developing social protection financing for the country. The deliberations of this conference will feed into the final strategy as we aim to tap into the vast knowledge and experience sharing in the next few days. Notwithstanding, here are the few key initiatives government is likely to embark on or have started. In order to have clarity on which expenditure lines to target in order to reach the vulnerable, the social protection thematic group on financing has embarked on budget classification of social protection. This will be used to monthly track the progress of our overall expenditure on social protection. 
With the completion of the Gambia Social Registry likely to be by the end of 2024, the government is committed to using less generalized subsidies and channeling funds into more targeted groups, and this will be reflected in the budget accordingly. The government will gradually mainstream social assistance into the national budget rather than rely on ad hoc and project-based cash transfers. In 2024, we will pilot the expansion of the Family Strengthening Program at the Department of Social Welfare in the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare. The target beneficiaries will be orphans, vulnerable children, persons with disabilities, and older persons. A robust evaluation will be set up from the beginning, and the findings will inform the expansion and the full rollout after two years. The Social Protection Bill includes the establishment of a Social Protection Fund, and upon consideration of the National Assembly, the modus operandi of the fund will be defined and the guidelines set for smooth operationalization. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we deliberate on the theme, we should seek solution to the following questions. One, how could we, how could national and external, in, uh, an external investment in social protection system be sustainably financed? Although it takes years to build a social protection system, how do we ensure that we finance and develop the adaptive systems to be able to respond to shocks as part of disaster risk management, risk financing, which should be at the core of the social protection. The investment case for social protection invest, uh, expenditures. Every government expenditure should have value for money, and social expense, uh, sector, social protection should not be left out. As such, we want to ensure that the question for today and tomorrow's deliberation should be uh, government intervention in the social protection space value for money public expenditures. Which is more effective, expenditure on rationalization or earmarking funding for social protection? That is means testing. I look forward to the deliberations of the conference and the opportunities for discussing the above questions. And I can assure the gathering here that the government of His Excellency, President Barrow, in collaboration with the development partners, will work tirelessly to ensure that the development agenda covers all facets of society, and that the poor and the vulnerable groups are central to this agenda. I thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Minister. And I hope that before we leave here in the next three days, we'll be able to have answers to the questions that um, you put out. So before I invite the Vice President um, to deliver his statement, I would just like to use this opportunity to, for all of you to join me to give a huge round of applause to the organizing committee of this um, particular event, because we all know how difficult it can be to bring people together, especially for three days to ensure that we stage something as a appreciate your work for putting something like this together. So moving on, um, final statement of the day, I'll invite His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, to deliver his statement. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, the Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, the Resident Coordinator of the UN System, Representative of the EU, the Country Representative for UNICEF, UNFPA, FAO, and UNDP, and all the members of the Diplomatic and Council of Corps here present, members of the National Assembly here present, 
the governors, um, here present, senior civil servants, the press, ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols duly and respectfully observed. I bring you greetings of His Excellency the President, Adam Barrow, who was supposed to be here, but as you know, he is still on his leave, so he has asked me to represent him. He would have liked to join you, maybe another time, um, when his leave ends. Your Excellency, the First Lady, ladies and gentlemen, I read the statement on behalf of His Excellency and his visitors. My government and its dedicated partners converge yet again to discuss social protection issues as we do every two years. It is a momentous event converging today as we grasp the lessons of COVID-19 on vulnerability, risk, and poverty. These are at the heart of social protection and the pandemic threatening to recede us back to extreme poverty the world over after decades of gains in our collective fight for increased prosperity, well-being for our people. The long-term vision for social protection in the Gambia is to establish by 2035 an inclusive, integrated and comprehensive social protection system that will effectively provide preventive, promotive and transformative measures to safeguard the lives of all poor and vulnerable groups and to contribute to broader human development, greater economic productivity, and inclusive growth. These are premised on the fundamental guidelines from the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. Section 2016, 2 of the Directive Principles of Safe State Policy obligates the state to ensure that persons with disabilities, the age, children, and other vulnerable members of society are provided just and equitable social opportunities, facilitate equal access to social amenities, and secure and promote a society founded on the principles of freedom, equality, justice, tolerance, probity, and accountability. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the government is also committed to social protection in line with our international commitments to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, which enshrines right to social security, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, 1981, and the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, 1990, which advance social protection with human rights approach. In line with these domestic and international commitments, our social protection system consists of the following priority areas. One, safeguard the welfare of the poorest and most vulnerable populations. Two, protect vulnerable populations from transitory shocks. Three, promote livelihoods and income of the poorest and vulnerable economically active populations. Number four, reduce people's exposure to social risks and vulnerabilities, including discrimination and exclusion. And five, strengthen leadership, governance, and social protection system in order to design and deliver effective and efficient programs. The recovery focus national development plan, pillar five, outcome 6.5, focus on resilience of households and individuals, strengthen and safety nets put in place to address vulnerabilities through social protection, reaffirms our commitment in the medium to long-term social protection. A social protection is multi-sectoral. As social protection is multi-sectoral, different key ministries continue to strive towards these objectives. These programs include, amongst others, the following. Cash transfer schemes are implemented by ministries, departments and agencies, NGOs and UN agencies, especially to respond to shocks. With our partnership with the World Bank, through the NAFA, we have implemented one of the most successful cash transfer schemes in the sub-region, impacting over 16,000 households. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, education as part of human capital development has proven to be one of the most effective ways of breaking intergenerational poverty. In line with the social protection policy priority one of protecting the welfare of the poorest, 
government continues to prioritize access to education as well as improvements in education quality outcomes. The school improvement grant, the provision of teaching aids and equipment, scholarships and school feeding program are all geared towards this objective. In line with our development aspirations and the social protection implementation plan, the government continues to provide health fee waivers and highly subsidized health services. These strides will continue in view of the recent establishment of the National Health Insurance Scheme, which aims to provide access to health care for all. The scheme has excluded vulnerable groups from contributions. Related, relatedly through the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, we continue to provide children-related support, gender empowerment programs, and the provision of social welfare services as encapsulated in the Social Protection Implementation Plan. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, year in, year out, my government provides agricultural input support to farmers, training support and basic life skills training to the numerous project interventions in the country geared towards overall food self-sufficiency. The government's decision to continue our subscription to the ACRS Capacity Insurance Program is also aimed at supporting our vulnerable populations, especially farmers, in response to weather shocks. In line with Poverty Priority Area 5, strengthening leadership, governance, and social protection systems in order to design and deliver effective and efficient programs, government established the National Social Protection Secretariat in 2019 under the office of the Vice President, responsible for implementing the policy directives of the National Population Secretariat Steering Committee. With support from the World Bank in building coordination structures, NSPS has achieved the following milestones. Development of the first ever Gambia Social Registry, which recently concluded data collection in the Comos. We are now left with only the Carnifying Municipality and Banjul. A compendium of high-level indicators and a monitoring plan for the entire social assistance sector has been developed and validated by all key players. This will be used to track progress in the sector. The Cabinet has recently approved the Social Protection Bill, providing direct legislation to the social assistance sector. The bill, which has already been submitted to the National Assembly, seeks to achieve the following, amongst others. Make provision for social assistance and to determine the qualification required in respect thereof. Ensure that minimum norms and standards are prescribed for the delivery of social assistance and provide for the establishment of a social protection fund for social assistance. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my government will mainstream direct social assistance into the budget by piloting the expansion of the family centering program to vulnerable groups in 2024 and 2025. Evidence gathered in this pilot will inform the subsequent scale up and expansion of the coverage as we strive to move away from project based social assistance in program based. My government has also recently established social protection regional subcommittees to be chaired by governors and comprising relevant technical advisory group members in each region. The objective, as defined in the policy, is to replicate the high-level coordination of the steering committee at the regions. The government will provide the necessary resources for smooth functioning of the structures. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of the strides on social protection, government will be hosting the ECOWAS meeting of experts and members of social protection on the first ever social protection framework later this month. Let me take this opportunity to thank our partners on their commitment on social protection. The World Bank for their support and partnership in providing safety nets and building social protection coordination structures. The European Union delegation for their support on the social protection policy in different areas, especially the recent budget support on increasing the coverage for social assistance. UNICEF on their continuous investment in children 
and recently support to the National Social Protection Secretariat in building coordination structures. The World Food Program on the social on the school feeding program, lean season support, and support to building social protection coordination structures, among others. The Food and Agriculture Organization on efforts geared towards food self-sufficiency and nutrition security. The United Nations Development Program on social protection through economic growth initiative in order to improve livelihoods, as well as the UNCDF on the economic inclusion intervention with the Department of Community Development. The United States of America on the incoming support on school feeding program, which actually uh, started in implementation. The NFPA support to young girls and women. The WHO on the broad support to the health sector. In conclusion, therefore, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I call on all development partners to continue the support and collaboration and looking forward to the final day on pledging of commitments towards social protection and the call to action paper. As a government, we lead by declaring our commitment to increasing social protection financing to increase coverage and reach. I thank you all for your attention and wish you a successful deliberation over the next few days. Thank you very much. so much, um, Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, for that statement and assuring us of your government support to social protection. Now, to further be able to hold everybody accountable, should I say that? Is that scary? <laughs> I'm not sure. We want, the, we want to have their signatures. That's safer, right? It's safer to have their signatures somewhere so that at some point, if we feel that things are not going the way we want, we can always look at it and say, oh, we have this person's signature here. But don't worry, I'll be signing as well. I'll be signing because the media has a huge role to play when it comes to social protection. And I'll use this opportunity to thank the media for coming here to join us today, all medias that are here. Thank you so much for joining us. And together, let us continue to raise the voices of the most vulnerable individuals. And I will now invite um, the high table to come and sign our board we have here. Um, we can have the Vice President of the Republic to lead, to sign the commitment. The, the government of the Gambia commits to increasing social protection financing for enhanced coverage. So that is the Vice President of the Gambia signing, committing to increasing. Oh. Yeah, this one works. This one works. Yeah, thank you so much. We can have the Minister of Finance. We can have the First Lady first. You're committing to increasing coverage, <laughs> to increasing finance, to increase um, social protection financing, which you're already doing anyway. A round of applause for her. Thank you so much. The Minister of Finance. We can have the EU delegation and the United Nations resident coordinator as well to join us for the signing. Thank you so much for the support that you're providing to the Gambia government to ensure that social protection programs are funded in the Gambia. Thank you so much. Thank you for your continuous commitment. And then afterwards, we can have the rest of us to also sign to commit and do it in our own individual ways. That's the National Coordinator of the Social Protection Secretariat. Thank you so much for the work. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that is all we have time for for the opening ceremony, but we'll go in for the group picture. And after the group picture, we have a conducted tour of vehicles of the National Social Protection Secretariat, which will be done by the Vice President of the Gambia. Thank you so much, everyone. poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, Takaful Fund, management of Zakat, management of Awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Yo, not transfer us. Yeah, transfer us. Have code in you. Okay. What's that? Conceal ID sort of. Ah, that's sort of. Sorry. I got it. Brilliant, bro. Alba. Alba. Bara Allah sabi sotaria. Ah, bara. Mo kija na nungko nung bara taria. Ah, jangno mi wana forest de biro. Gambia tungko na nung bara ya biro. Ah, birim ko na fokato. Bara isi kodo kino kato ni po bolong blabe. 56 branches more so the Gambia. Huh? Ka. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Banko. Nka Kono Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Palindiro for Nadi left a member of Kodito Koton in Kodimaro. Janum number one in Yonda. And Nun for another another enterprise is Sotali. Wall of Golam Nintuko, Domoro Fanan Kol for a day feud at the Daddy Man in Domoro Nilfan at the theatre. Gambia Dowda Yalom of Fakindol Sotali. Ha, one more ha. A parent of Yalom left a Yal and Kendo Levina. Yalabuka Nilakola, Yalandel Chosano. 